Hello, this is Tim. Today we will talk about the ice protection system on an aircraft. First, let's look at what is an ice protection system. On an aircraft, this system is used to remove ice that is already formed or it is used to prevent the formation of ice. The process of removing ice that is already formed is called as de-icing. The process of preventing ice formation is called as anti-icing. So why does an aircraft need an ice protection system? We know that aircrafts fly at high altitudes above the Earth's surface. At this altitude, the temperatures are very low. If there is any moisture content in the air, ice begins to form on the aircraft. The ice can form only on certain parts of an aircraft, such as the leading edge of the wing, engine inlet, the pitot and the static tubes, and the cockpit windows. If ice forms on the leading edge of the wing, the lift created by the wing is reduced. If ice forms on the engine inlet, the thrust produced by the engine is affected. In case of ice formation on the pitot tubes or the static tubes, the flight instruments are affected, which will result in incorrect indication of speed and altitude. If there is ice formation on the cockpit windows, the pilot's visibility outside the aircraft gets affected. So in order to conduct a safe flight, all these main components require protection from ice formation. Now let's look at an aircraft's de-icing system. This system is used to remove ice that is already formed. This is usually done by de-icer boots which are located on the leading edge of the wing. Let's take the wing's airfoil shape to understand how de-icer boots work. These boots are made of soft rubber that forms the shape of the airfoil when they are deflated. If there is any ice formation on the wing, these rubber boots get inflated which causes the ice to break. If the aircraft is moving forward, the ice easily breaks and falls away from the aircraft. The air that is needed for the inflation of the boots is taken from the engines. This air is regulated by a shut-off valve which can be controlled from the cockpit. Now let's look at an aircraft's anti-icing system. This system is used to prevent the formation of ice. This can be done by thermal anti-icing or electrical anti-icing. Thermal anti-icing can be used on the leading edge of the wings and the inlet section of the engines. Let's again look at the airfoil section to see how this works. The airfoil has a hot air duct which directs hot air towards the leading edge of the airfoil. This prevents the ice formation. On the engines, a similar hot air duct is installed which directs hot air towards the engine's intake structure. This prevents the ice formation on the engine. For thermal anti-icing, hot air from the engine is used. The hot air is controlled by separate valves for the wing and for the engine and they open or close based on inputs from the cockpit. Now let's look at electric anti-icing. This is used in the pitot tubes and the static tubes. On a pitot static system, air needs to enter it so that information such as speed and altitude can be calculated and indicated in the cockpit. But if there is any ice formation, the air gets blocked which results in incorrect readings in the cockpit. Thermal anti-icing is not practical on this tube, so electric anti-icing is done with the help of resistance elements. These elements operate on the aircraft's electrical power. Now let's look at the cockpit window anti-icing. Anti-icing is provided to the windows so that pilots have good visibility outside the aircraft. If this is the window, a thin heating element is fixed on the window. This heating element needs to be transparent and should be non-shattering. This heating element also works on the aircraft's electrical power and is controlled by a switch in the cockpit. Based on the aircraft design, the manufacturer can decide on which components need protection from ice and the type of ice protection system required for each component. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.